So good morning, Ivanka. Good and morning. Thank you very much. Happy to be here. Thank you very much for uh, being with us today. It's my pleasure. Um, what a nice venue too, right? This we've beautiful. had a lot of good feedback about this, the natural light, and we're going to talk a little bit about that today too. Um, but again, thank you. And so today we're going to talk about how obsessing over details is the only way to build a hospitality brand. Now there's been a lot of excitement about you coming today, and a lot of people have uh, talked to me about this beforehand. And one question that keeps popping up is, what do you do at the Trump Organization? Your exact, yeah. <laughs> um, your exact role, which is significant. But maybe just to start off, you could just explain you know, a little bit about your function at the company. So we're not long on, on titles. Okay. We very much have an environment that's really entrepreneurial, and we encourage people to try different things. Um, really stretch their wings. And if somebody has the will and the ability to excel in an area, we want to afford them the freedom to do so. So, you know, that starts right at the top. Um, in terms of the Trump Organization, though, I guess on, on a most basic level, I spearhead um, all development and acquisitions for us. So primarily focused on the real estate side. I work alongside my two brothers. Uh, Don and, and Eric, who are amazing. We collectively co-founded the Trump Hotel Collection, which we're all incredibly proud of and um, is enjoying tremendous momentum. We created a great operating platform, you, largely by deciding to self-manage some of our early hotels and realizing that it was a great, um, it was really a great platform for us to grow the brand into markets where it would make less sense for us to be the developers, but where we could bring that same level of execution, that same high standard, um, that same level of service that our guests had come to appreciate um, and, and expect at our properties. So it's been phenomenal. We recently brought in our first CEO, Eric Danziger, who I have no doubt is going to take us to the next level from a growth perspective. But you know, in terms of my brothers and myself, we're really always looking at new deals, underwriting deals, obviously working with each of our different teams, with Eric on the hotel side, um, to realize um, to realize the, the company's full potential and, and um, to set the creative and aesthetic tone for, for what we want Trump Hotels to stand for. On the golf side, we have a robust and growing portfolio of truly iconic assets in, in the golf world. And that's an area that has grown very rapidly over the last decade and we've all been deeply involved in properties from Turnberry the iconic resort in, in Scotland, to Doral in, in Florida, some of which have hotel components. Both of those are an example. So we're seeing a lot of growth in the hotel space because traditionally you'd have, in the resort space, because traditionally you'd have an operator, a third party managing the golf, maybe a brand for the condo. Mm -hmm. There were all these different players who weren't necessarily working harmoniously um, or thinking about the holistic bigger picture of the success of the project. They were concerned about their components of it and sort of maximizing those components. So for us to come in and have a deep understanding both of the development and the operations of both sides of the business has been golf, um, hotels, obviously condominium, which is where our roots are and I think has, has very much influenced our hospitality vantage point. When you're building somebody's home, and especially at the highest level, like our condominium buildings that have set continuously the tone for the most luxurious, um, for really setting that international standard with every new project that comes online, you spend a lot of time thinking about what people value, how people live, how people utilize space, how people move within their space. You have to. Otherwise, you won't be successful. I mean, if people are making that type of purchase for their home, their primary or secondary, they're giving you very real, very critical feedback. Mm -hmm. And I think all of that has really gone to inform how we think about common spaces in our hotels, how we think about the rooms, the layouts. I'm very proud of that. A lot of times, um, developers or hotel managers will sort of view that as an afterthought. Eh, it's a box, it's got a bathroom, it's got X number of fixtures, but they're not 
obsessed with it in the same way we are. And I think some of that is, is our condominium roots. Okay. So that's a long way of saying I do pretty much a little bit of everything on, uh, on the real estate side. But, um, but really, we always look for great captains of our various businesses, and we work with them as partners. Um, I always tell Eric that the greatest thing that I can do for him is, is be an asset and a tool to enable him to accomplish our collective goals. Um, and that's what I seek to do across all of our businesses. Okay. Um, the last time we sat down was at the Trump Doral um, about a year ago. Um, so maybe to couch what, everything you said in specifics. So one, this is a two-part question. One, how is it a benefit that you being not just the hotel operator, um, but also the developer, you know, how is that manifested in the, the user experience at, um, at Trump Durrell? And then <clears throat> the second question was, I remember being there, and there's this sort of beautiful story arc between what Miami once was and what Miami is you know, moving into, and with all of these different elements in terms of mid-century um, furnishings and the black and white Gary Player photos that your dad chose. I mean, it was just a beautiful story. So if you could just sort of explain, one, how um, you being a developer helped you accomplish that, and then get into some of maybe the specific details so people can understand your creative process. Well, I think there are a lot of tremendous assets to the fact that we are developers. One, on a basic level, when we're working with our partners, they trust us and they appreciate the construction and development feedback that we're giving. Oftentimes, given the duration of um, my father's development background and, and the magnitude of the projects he's done, I would say most times we've built more than our partners have. So they enjoy the feedback we give them that isn't critical for the sake of critical. It's not throwing a 600-page brand standards manual and saying, build this, otherwise it can't be a Trump hotel. It's much more collaborative. We like to get in from the very beginning, help them articulate something that works. Plus, we also put our money where our mouth is. We, at any given time, right now we have over $2 billion worth of construction projects that we are building without partners. So I will never look at one of our hotel development partners and say, build that, if we wouldn't be willing to build it ourselves. So I think there is a mutual trust, a mutual respect, that we recognize what the customer values, where money is well spent, where it's not well spent, where it's some random brand standard cooked up by an interior designer in a lab somewhere that's just not applicable to the property it's being applied to. You know, we, we really like to think ourselves as um, working on each project, not in accordance with some overarching standard, but knowing what's appropriate for that market and always having a very clear compass of what is luxury. So we never deviate. And I think part of the reason we're able to have such interesting, beautiful, award-winning buildings from our architectural and design perspective is because we're able to get creative, we're not as contained. Mm -hmm. Luxury takes many different shapes and forms. There are certain truths, right? Ceiling heights, bathroom fixtures, room size, amenity space, fine. Like that, you have to sort of lock into certain parameters. But in terms of you know, the shape of the building, in terms of the layouts, you can have a lot of fun and really push luxury to the next level if you're willing to. So I think being a developer, it's, it's, we're speaking the same language as our third party owners and they appreciate that. I think also, you know, I, it's funny, I'll watch CNBC some mornings and I'll see the CEO of a major hotel company talking about his asset light strategy. Mm -hmm and talking about the fact that he doesn't believe in owning real estate, that it's bad, that it's weighing down their stock. And I'm going, wow, if I was an owner looking for an operator, I wouldn't really want to hear that the operator doesn't like owning real estate and doesn't think that's a viable. It's, 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 such, um, it's, <laughs> it's such a contrary message when you're you know, thinking about growth. And I think we are the opposite. Not only do we believe in owning real estate, but we're holders in the long term. You'll very rarely hear about us selling real estate unless it's a condominium building. Mm. We hold our assets, we believe in them, we maintain them, we continue to invest money in them, and we've made great deals with them. And so I think the owners that we're talking to like the fact that we share their perspective on, on the long-term value of real estate in this particular category. 
I also think from a design perspective, and we were talking about this before, we're actual builders, it's not conceptual, and we get in very early, so a lot of times, you know, we'll look at great projects. I always feel so guilty when somebody brings me a great project, but there are things they could have done differently to make it better, but it's just a little bit too late. Like, I know exactly how much it's gonna cost them to make the change. Mm -hmm. And that's the dialogue that most developers are having with operators, it's a little too late. So for us, the ability to sort of get involved at the early stage and help conceive of a project rather than simply policing a standard after the fact is, um, is, also, is also very beneficial. So I think there's a, lot of, there's a lot of assets. We have our development team and our hotel team literally on the same floor in offices that are right next to each other. So at every stage in our projects, you know, we're asking the hotel management team about the viability of how we've thought to lay out or program a space, and vice versa. So there's constant dialogue and, and feedback, and there's, it's just not at all disjointed. Okay, excellent. Um, Trump Hotel Collection is going through quite a growth spurt. From what I understand, you have five hotels under development, Vancouver, Washington, D.C., Rio, which is exciting, Bali, and the new West Java property. That's right. So that's five, and, and all together, if you include Doombeg and Turnberry, and you, you only have 15 hotels yeah. completely. So that's like a 33% or 300% jump in your, your property um, and pipeline. And Baku, I'm not sure if you mentioned that. So. Uh, I'm sorry? Baku as well. Okay. So we have, we, we have an exciting year. So it's a great year. What's behind that growth spurt? Well, so we always set ambitious goals for ourselves and nobody would ever say that as an organization we're tentative. We really like to push hard and, um, and, and we are always hold ourselves to a very high standard. In the hotel business though, we wanted to have a very strong foundation of Trump as an operator. People know Trump is a very good builder they didn't know about our track record as an operator. So we were building these great hotels and we were saying, you know what, let's show what we can do. Let's show what we can do for third parties. Let's show what we're doing relative to these legacy brands with our own properties. And once we have the performance track record, let's go for it. Some of it just came in organically. People were looking at their star reports and realizing that we're outperforming the competition and our phone was ringing. But now is you know, really the time where we're deciding to, to make that push in, in a big way because we have the combination of you know, the scale in terms of major markets that we're in, the Miamis, DCs, um, New Yorks, et cetera. Um, but we also have the operating credibility behind us. So I think the marriage of those two things are entrepreneurial spirit, which means we hop on a plane right away. We know the pain point for a developer who's sitting with a very expensive piece of land and a term sheet they've been holding from you know three luxury brands for the last eight months and haven't been able to move the needle. So we've actually signed a lot of deals just because we think differently. If we want something, we go get it. Like we don't wait around. A lot of times we'll do a handshake deal. We'll spend tens of hours working on design and development prior to anything being actually formally finalized in terms of a contract because, you know, it is what it is. Um, we, we like to move things forward. We, we believe ultimately that the best deals are one where your visions are completely aligned. So we like to know that in an early stage anyway. So even if it means some work um, that's for the benefit of, of, of a party that you know, we ultimately don't end up doing a deal with, if we don't end up doing a deal, it wasn't meant to be. Okay. So, it's, um, so it's been great. And we have a very robust pipeline. You've mentioned just the openings in, in 2016, but behind that we have many um, in the pipeline and several new announcements we'll be making in the next month. So I think the, the industry has taken notice of what our customer is saying about the experience they're having at our properties. So speaking about the experience, and we've talked about this before, and I think this is really fascinating because you are a celebrity and you have this amazing following on social media, um, 1.7 million on Twitter, 633 on Instagram, and before we've talked about how you sort of crowdsource ideas in terms of design and the guest experience and that you reach out to your um, audience on a personal level um, to get some of those ideas. Could you talk a little bit about you know, how that works and maybe what some of the ideas have been? Well, I think increasingly authenticity is everything 
in brand building. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's so important. People know when they stay at a Trump property that they can write a letter to Mr. Donald Trump, to Mrs. Ivanka Trump, they, and they do that for the good and the bad. You know, so it's, I think people appreciate personality-driven brands when there's a deep sense of authenticity. And, and we're very fortunate, actually, in the hotel space that most of our competitors are large, bureaucratic organizations that aren't led by founders anymore and that aren't led by families. Many of the great hotel companies started that way. They started as family businesses and then became larger public companies. So I think we bring a level of authenticity. Social media is a great channel to communicate directly and to build community. And I think especially since experience is such an important part of our guests um, really such a driving factor of why they choose one property over another, I think we're able to do that and create real moments of surprise and awe for them. Uh, just this morning, I saw on, uh, on my Instagram account mm -hmm. that somebody had posted a picture of a like she had gotten from me on one of her social channels. She had taken a screenshot, and in her, in her narrative that she wrote underneath in her comment, she said, this was the most incredible week I posted one thing across all my channels. I got a retweet from Ivanka Trump. I got a like from Eric Trump. And I got um, a retweet from the property she was staying at. I believe it was Trump Toronto. And, um, and she got uh, like a mention from my father. And this, you know, that's a customer who's had an experience now that she'll talk about for a long time. But there's so many examples of that. And I found that when we ask people questions as opposed to just showing them, you know, these mediums are very interactive. So in the early days, um, I started, when I first got on Instagram, when I first started using Facebook, I started taking renderings of projects under development and throwing them up, you know, not waiting to do some big sensational thing in, in, in the trade pubs, but just asking, saying, what do you think of this lobby for a building we have planned in, in DC or Las Vegas? And the feedback we got was incredible. And, and by the way, we actually made some tweaks here and there to, to comments we get. It's amazing. So people react. It was all very positive reaction, but people had very specific call-outs based on their aesthetic and preferences. But it was a great way to engage. And then throughout the lives of these projects, I'll follow up periodically, give a little bit more information, get more feedback, and you build some real excitement um, towards the asset and also a feeling of um, that their voices within our community are being heard, and, and that's very valuable to us. Um, and I think it's something that's really enjoyed by, by our followers. And it's something that we can uniquely do because they know we're real people. You know, we're not somebody hired to, mm -hmm. to do this on behalf of, of that brand or that company, but we're, we're doing it ourselves. You know, another area that um, has been interestingly synergistic um, for the company is, is my own brand, which is very much geared um, at a professional working woman, so a millennial working woman. So the audience that we've developed in the community we've developed at Ivanka Trump has been very beneficial for expanding um, the typical Trump Hotel demographic. And we're constantly thinking about ways to speak to this young female business traveler in a unique and authentic way and using both of these mediums to, to support and promote one another. So you'll be seeing a lot more of that going forward as well. And I would encourage everyone, because I just discovered IvancaTrump.com last night, um, the, the women work. The, what's the hashtag? The it's hashtag women who works. So. Women who works. Yeah. And it was really, really fascinating. I learned a lot of things. I learned. Um, how to wear leopard at work, too. So, <laughs> um. so what, what this campaign was is um, I decided to create a website that wasn't commerce driven. So it's not an e-commerce site, it's a content site, it's really a media business, a publishing platform, where we're creating great content for this next generation of working women with life hacks, style tips, but it's really everything is through the filter and the lens of this working woman, this modern working woman. And we launched the website, we have a newsletter that's great, and we're often talking about travel tips where we're having different GMs talk about um, sort of travel hacks and, and our different properties. So we're always weaving that into the dialogue as well in an organic, natural way. Um, we did um, 
a wine buying cheat sheet and we had to have the general manager of our property in Virginia, um, which has a huge vineyard, uh, give us the content and really mm -hmm. develop the narrative. So it's a really nice way to bring all elements of, of Trump into this dialogue as well. But when I started the campaign, I launched with a video called Women Who Work um, and that hashtag. And really it's about celebrating the fact that women today are incredibly multi-dimensional and that needs to be celebrated by pop culture. There's this persistent stereotype of the woman in the black pantsuit. And I saw an advertisement for one of my um, clothing and apparel. I, I have a um, collection of, of apparel and accessories. And I saw an advertisement by one of our competitors showing the supermodel dressed in a black pantsuit blown up to be the size of the buildings on Park Avenue and straddling Park Avenue holding a briefcase. Now, all I'm thinking is some 70-year-old man definitely thought this is what a working woman looks like, but it's not reflective. It's almost, it's almost um, a caricature mm -hmm. of, of how this woman lives, how she dresses, and, and how we should perceive her. So I thought there was an opportunity to really disrupt that, change the narrative, celebrate that we represent half the population. We're working at different things at different points in our lives and have different priorities, and that's good. We can't be sort of lumped into one group of professional women. So it's been amazing, and the campaign was very successful. Our hotels got very involved in it, which was a lot of fun. So when I launched this video, I had 13 of my um, friends who are very successful entrepreneurs, I filmed them and I asked them what work looks like to them. And I told them to give me their professional titles last. So they're talking about training for marathons and being amateur gardeners, raising children, teaching their son the alphabet, mm -hmm. um, being wives, being sisters, and then saying what they do, which in all cases in this case were, was you know, very impressive. So it was a fun way to say, that we work at a lot of things, we work at all aspects of our lives. But I actually asked the um, social media community to do their own selfie videos, hashtag women who work, and tag me, at Ivanka Trump, and tell me what work looks like to them. So I had thousands, tens of thousands of, of these videos come in and we really began a dialogue. And then it was very nice because all of our hotel teams independently got very involved and I had associates and, and employees from all over the country that were working in Trump properties sending me in their videos. And it was really great. It was a great opportunity to engage our, our hotel community as well in, in, in an exciting effort. That is interesting. That's something I'd like to follow up at another time. This was the quickest 20 minutes of my life. We are out of time. <laughs> um, there's, you know, we could talk for the whole day and I think people would actually you know, enjoy that. But anyway, Thank you very much again Thank for you. being here. No, it's, um, it's my a pleasure. pleasure seeing you again. Thank you all. I enjoyed this. <laughs>